According to Reuters, Israel has received a list of hostages set to be freed from Gaza on Saturday by Palestinian militant group Hamas, officials said, following the release of 24 hostages during the first day of a planned four-day truce on Friday. Israeli security officials were reviewing the list, said a statement from the office of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, whose government promised to work toward the release of all hostages taken by Hamas in an attack on Israel on October 7. According to Reuters, Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer convicted in the death of George Floyd, was stabbed in federal prison on Friday and seriously injured, the Associated Press said, citing a person familiar with the matter. Floyd's death in 2020 unleashed a wave of protests worldwide against police brutality and racism after Chauvin, who is white, knelt on the handcuffed black man's neck for more than nine minutes in a murder caught on cell phone video. According to Reuters, 20 Thai nationals were still being held by Hamas after the Palestinian militant group freed 10, Thailand's foreign ministry said on Saturday. The Thai hostages freed from Gaza in Friday's exchange of hostages held by Hamas and Palestinians from Israeli jails would return home after 48 hours in hospital, the ministry said in a statement. According to Reuters, Argentina president-elect Javier Malay said on Friday he had spoken with the director of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva, regarding plans to adjust the country's fiscal policy and monetary program. The fund showed itself to be collaborative in looking to find the structural solutions Argentina needs, Malay said on social media network X. According to Reuters, lawyers for former Binance CEO Changpeng Zhao are urging a U.S. judge to reject the Justice Department's request to bar him from returning to his home in the United Arab Emirates until he is sentenced for violating anti-money laundering requirements. Zhao's lawyers in a Thursday filing asked U.S. District Judge Richard Jones in Seattle not to reverse bail conditions set by a magistrate judge on Tuesday that would allow him to leave the U.S. while awaiting sentencing. According to Bloomberg, Israel began welcoming back the first group of hostages released by Hamas from captivity in Gaza under a four-day halt in the fighting that has devastated the Palestinian territory since the deadly attack by militants last month. We are relieved to confirm the safe release of 24 hostages, the International Committee of the Red Cross said in a post on X, formerly Twitter. The group was made up of 13 Israelis, some with dual citizenship and all women and minors, as well as 10 Thai nationals and a citizen of the Philippines. According to Reuters, Palestinian militant group Hamas is still holding 20 Thai nationals after having freed 10 from Gaza, Thailand's foreign ministry said on Saturday following a deal during the first truce of a seven-week war. The freed hostages will return home after 48 hours in hospital, the ministry said in a statement after the deal brokered separately from Friday's exchange of hostages for Palestinians from Israeli jails. According to Reuters, Elon Musk-owned social media company X could lose as much as $75 million in advertising revenue by the end of the year as dozens of major brands pause their marketing campaigns, The New York Times reported on Friday. Musk backing an anti-Semitic post on the platform last week has led several companies including Walt Disney and Warner Brothers Discovery to pause their advertisements on the site formerly called Twitter. According to Reuters, Efforts to rescue 41 workers trapped in a highway tunnel in the Indian Himalayas for two weeks will be further slowed as rescuers are considering drilling through the last 10 meters of debris manually, an official said on Saturday. The heavy drill machine being used to break through the nearly 60 meters of debris was damaged on Friday and needs to be pulled out entirely, according to an official statement. According to Reuters, Ukraine's capital city took the brunt of what the country's air force described as Russia's largest drone attack of the war on Saturday, leaving five people wounded as the continuing rumble of air defenses and explosions woke residents. The attack, which used Iranian-designed Shahed Kamikaze drones, began hitting different districts of Kyiv in the early hours of Saturday, with more waves coming as the sun rose. According to Bloomberg, International Monetary Fund Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva and Argentine President-elect Javier Malay held their first call Friday night to discuss the country's economy amid triple-digit inflation and a plummeting currency. We discussed the significant challenges for Argentina's economy and the decisive policy actions needed, Georgieva said in a post on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. According to Reuters, 
Hamas fighters released a first wave of 24 hostages including Israeli women and children and Thai farm workers under a truce deal that saw guns fall silent across the Gaza Strip for the first time in seven weeks, with more hostages set to freed. The following is a timeline of the war between Israel and Hamas, the Islamist movement that controls the Gaza Strip. According to Bloomberg, Israel said it expects Palestinian militant group Hamas to release more hostages on Saturday, a day after a four-day ceasefire began in the Gaza Strip. Israel Defense Forces said it expects to receive about 13 captives a day until the total reaches approximately 50. Saturday's release is expected to take place around 4 p.m. local time, similar to Friday's, when Hamas set free 24 captives, including 10 Thais and one citizen of the Philippines, Al Jazeera TV channel reported. According to Bloomberg, a recession in the euro area is looking increasingly likely as the economic downturn persists in the final quarter of the year, private sector activity surveys showed. Meantime, the outlook for global trade got a boost this week as South Korea's exports are likely to maintain momentum. Elsewhere in Asia, Chinese banks maintained their benchmark rates as they aim to boost liquidity and support lending. According to Reuters, Israel and Palestinian Islamist group Hamas started a four-day truce on Friday morning and a first group of hostages was released later that day. What are the details of the deal? According to Reuters, the Chinese military said on Saturday that American naval destroyer USS Hopper entered China's territorial waters without the approval of the Chinese government. According to a post on the official WeChat account of the Chinese People Liberation Army's Southern Theater Command, the Chinese military deployed its naval and air forces to track, monitor and warn away the vessel. According to Reuters, Hamas fighters released a first wave of 13 Israeli women and children on Friday under a truce deal and also released 11 farm workers from Thailand and the Philippines, after guns fell silent across the Gaza Strip for the first time in seven weeks. Here is what we know about the hostages. According to Reuters, like many young people growing up in Sardinia, Davide Sanna loved Italian cuisine and wanted to have a successful career as a chef. But to do so, he had to move to New York. Sanna had worked in kitchens on the Mediterranean island and in northern Italy for four years, starting when he was only 19. But he was toiling 60 hours a week to take home just 1,800 euros a month, at best. In the busy summer season, he'd be at the stove every day for two months, without a break. According to Reuters, British troops are patrolling the Kosovo-Serbia border as part of a NATO peacekeeping presence being bolstered amid concern that the former wartime foes could return to open conflict following a series of violent incidents in recent months. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization sent hundreds of additional forces to Kosovo from Britain and Romania after a battle between the authorities and armed Serbs holed up in a monastery turned a quiet village in northern Kosovo into a war zone on September 24. According to Bloomberg, Nigeria's central bank pledged major changes to get a grip on inflation and steady the country's battered currency, signaling tighter monetary policy ahead. The central bank of Nigeria will switch to inflation targeting instead of trying to control money supply in its battle to slow price increases, Governor Olayemi Cardozo said in a speech to bankers on Friday. The central bank raised its key rate by 25 basis points to 18.75% when it last met in July. Inflation since then has accelerated to an 18-year high of 27.3%. Cardozo also ordered commercial banks to bolster capital reserves. According to Yahoo Finance, last month, a real estate agent in Patty Zuzik's office got a call about selling a plot of land. The caller, who had heard about the real estate agency through a Facebook post wanted to sell the vacant lot $75,000 below the market value. The caller's only request was that the transaction be in cash. According to Bloomberg, Russia's Gazprom PJSC said its natural gas deliveries to China have hit a new historic high amid rising demand. Chinese National Petroleum Corp. requested volumes via the Power of Siberia 1 route that once again exceeded Gazprom's contractual obligations on November 23, the Russian producer said in a statement cited by state news service TASS on Saturday. According to Reuters, Beijing police are investigating suspected crimes committed by Zhongzi Enterprise Group, a leading Chinese wealth manager, according to a social media post published by the Chaoyang Public Security Bureau on Saturday. 
Zhangzi earlier this week told investors it is heavily insolvent with up to $64 billion in liabilities, threatening to reignite concerns that China's property debt crisis is spilling over into the broader financial sector. According to Reuters, a financing scheme that draws on funding from Western donors to help developing countries shift to cleaner power generation could be mirrored for heavy industries and other hard-to-abate sectors, Egypt's climate champion said. Extending a just energy transition partnership structure to sectors including steel, aluminium, cement and fertilizers made sense because of new European Union rules that would otherwise penalize developing world exporters, UN climate change high-level champion Mahmoud Mohildin said in an interview. According to Reuters, Ukraine needs more air defenses to protect its grain export routes as well regions bordering Russia, President Volodymyr Zelensky said on Saturday, as he addressed an international summit on food security in Kyiv. There is a deficit of air defense, that is no secret, Zelensky told the grain from Ukraine summit, which was attended by senior officials from European countries, including Swiss President Alain Berset and Lithuanian Prime Minister Ingrida Simonite. According to Yahoo Finance, making decisions about retirement savings can feel monumental. But what if someone told you that, money aside, your mindset may be the magic elixir? In a new report, Goldman Sachs Asset Management and Syntonic, a behavioral finance research firm, surveyed 5,261 U.S. workers and retirees and teased out four psychological factors that can close the gaps between your retirement savings goals and your future reality. According to Bloomberg, Hamas will delay the release of the second group of hostages until Israel follows terms of their deal related to relief trucks in northern Gaza and certain, agreed-upon standards for releasing prisoners, the group said Saturday. Earlier, a Hamas official shared a 14-item list of concerns including the alleged fatal shootings of two Gazans and reconnaissance aircraft flying over southern Gaza. According to Yahoo Finance, after two years of higher spending, Consumers are battling challenges like rising interest rates, dwindling savings, the return of student loan payments, and credit card debt. Call it choiceful, discerning, careful, cautious, Telsey Advisory Group CEO Dana Telsey told Yahoo Finance Live. It's going to be a cautious, holiday, season. According to Reuters, MasterCard SpendingPulse said on Saturday that U.S. retail sales on Black Friday rose 2.5% year-over-year excluding automotive sales, not adjusted for inflation. In September, MasterCard SpendingPulse, which measures in-store and online retail sales across all forms of payment, said it anticipated U.S. retail sales, excluding automotive, to grow 3.7% during the holiday season, running from November 1 through December 24. According to Bloomberg, Chinese authorities said they recently opened criminal investigations into the money management business of Zhangzi Enterprise Group Company, days after the embattled shadow banking giant revealed a shortfall of $36.4 billion in its balance sheet. Police in Beijing said in a statement on WeChat that they took criminal mandatory measures against multiple suspects, identifying one by the last name Xie. They urged investors to report cases or provide leads to the authorities, including filing complaints online. Xie Jikin, the group's founder, died in 2021, but several of his relatives are currently executives at the company. According to Bloomberg, Damien Rydell has turned down an invitation to lead Argentina's central bank in the administration of President-elect Javier Malay, Claren reported on its website, citing people familiar with the move that it didn't name. Bloomberg previously reported that Malay had tapped Rydell and Luis Caputo, two former officials who held key posts during Mauricio Macri's presidency from 2015 to 2019, to lead his economic team. According to Bloomberg, Cigna is holding last-ditch talks with investors, hoping to secure a funding lifeline and avoid a wave of insolvencies in the €23 billion Euros property empire. One unit of the sprawling conglomerate founded by Austrian tycoon René Benko already filed for insolvency on Friday, and further notifications may follow in coming weeks, according to two people with direct knowledge of Cigna's efforts. According to Bloomberg, inflation gauges in the US and Eurozone are set to show the smallest annual increases since early or mid-2021, reinforcing sentiment that interest rates won't be raised again. The Federal Reserve's preferred measures will be published on Thursday, with the Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index seen rising 3.1% in October from a year ago.
The core measure, which excludes food and fuel and is considered a better gauge of underlying inflation, is expected to have climbed 3.5%. According to Reuters, the Premier of Alberta, Canada's main oil-producing province, on Saturday said her government intends to move an act on Monday to shield provincial power companies from proposed federal clean electricity regulations. Speaking at a morning radio program on Saturday, Premier Danielle Smith, who says the plans of the federal government to cut greenhouse gas emissions will wreck the energy industry, said she was driven to act by frustration with the federal government. According to Reuters, Cigna, Austria's largest privately owned real estate company, is holding last-ditch talks with investors, hoping to secure a funding lifeline and avoid a wave of insolvencies, Bloomberg News reported on Saturday. One unit of the sprawling conglomerate founded by Austrian tycoon René Benko already filed for insolvency on Friday, and further notifications may follow in coming weeks, the report added, citing two people with direct knowledge of Cigna's efforts. According to Reuters, 13 Israeli and four Thai nationals released from Hamas captivity arrived in Israel on Sunday and were set to be reunited with their families as part of a crucial hostage deal which briefly risked falling apart due to a dispute over aid supplies. The short-lived row over aid that threatened the temporary truce to free captives was overcome with the mediation of Qatar and Egypt but it underscored the fragility of the agreement, through which a total of 50 Israeli hostages are to be exchanged for 150 Palestinian prisoners over four days. According to Bloomberg, the world's most developed nations will be told to curb their excessive appetite for meat as part of the first comprehensive plan to bring the global agri-food industry into line with the Paris Climate Agreement. The Global Food Systems Roadmap to 1.5C is expected to be published by the United Nations Food Agriculture Organization during the COP28 summit next month. Nations that overconsume meat will be advised to limit their intake, while developing countries, where underconsumption of meat adds to a prevalent nutrition challenge will need to improve their livestock farming, according to the FAO. According to Reuters, the foreign ministers of South Korea, China and Japan meet in South Korea on Sunday, seeking to restart cooperation among the Asian neighbors and pave the way for a trilateral summit. While China and the United States have been mending frayed ties, including a summit this month between Presidents Xi Jinping and Joe Biden, Beijing is concerned that Washington and its key regional allies are strengthening their three-way partnership.